all I can say is if the operable word is warm, warm, <laughs> warm people, warm, generous hospitality, and, and the climatic conditions goes without saying. But unfortunately, I'm not going to endorse it or anybody else, and this is a straight from mouths and it, it, almost in a straight line, so it sounds like it's very, very self centered. And it is. <laughs> to just put it in perspective, I'm the chief of the Clouds of Brass, so in actual fact there are three chiefs, but right at the beginning there's really only two. And I'm the third, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the newcomer. Three clan chiefs, or two clan chiefs, that right at the beginning, around about 1100, there was a the progenitor of the, of the Cloud family called Leod, or Leod, or spelt the L E O D bit on the end of it, as we know our name. He had two sons, simplistically, it's not quite that simple, but he had two sons, Torquil and Tormod. And Tormod is reputed to be the elder one, but we, we refute that, but we'll go with history. <laughs> Tormod uh, is the sort of the progenitor of the, of the Harris or Dunvegan Isle of Skye lot. And the Torquil line, which is the side I come from, was from Lewis and parts of, uh, uh, parts of Skye. Isle of Rasse and some land on mainland Scotland as well, and Applecross and Glare, um, Gearlock and some areas around there. So widespread, know about that. So two, two sort of part to the clan, Torquil and Torbot. And by uh, Hugh McLeod of McLeod is the chief of the clouds of McLeod, as he's called, the region was Harris. And he lives both on in Dunvegan Castle and also lives in London when in life is miserable in Scotland various times of year. Some might say all the time of year. And my brother Donald is Chief of Lewis and he lives in Hobart with me. Or I don't know. And there's myself. In 1510, if, if anybody knows the sort of the, the geography of Scotland, you've got the Outer Hebrides out here, then you've got the Isle of Skye, then you've got Rasse, then you've got the land on the, on the east coast of Scotland, or west coast of Scotland mainly. Chief that of Lewis at the time thought he needed well, two reasons for it. Firstly, he needed like a sub lieutenant to look after his, his eastern lands. So he gave Rasse and all his lands and titles to his second son Malcolm, and there at 1500 was born the new, the new clan, so to speak. And from through the family history, it's come, come down to me. But it's actually, if it went apart, we're back together again. Because Lewis as such doesn't sort of have a, a prominence in as much as a, a numerical lineage anymore. It stopped it. Old Rory, who was the 10th, had a son who, I think, you've got to understand how the feudal system worked over there. I mean, they, they fought amongst themselves, family against family, father against son. And the son, Torquil, put his father in jail. I mean, you know, <laughs> because what he's trying to do is favours from the king. This was his past I mean, um, love hath no mercy. <laughs> So in about uh, just before, well, 1999, my father decided he had both Rasse and Lewis titles as such, because they because the Lewis sort of died out and they were put together, and then father said, well, to me, would you like it? So he had the authority to sort of say, look, I don't want both. So I, I got it. Uh, okay, it might be perceived to be the junior clan, but uh, I tell you, it's, it's a mighty part of it, and uh, a very strong following, and I think it's... Uh, we do have the Isle of Rasa, we have a Rasa house, which we'll talk about a minute, where you talk about restoration of things, and you sort of see that, you know, gobs back in numbers when it comes back to fixing things. And but the important thing is that we do have an island that's it's unique, it's, it's a little parcel of land that goes through. We have a clan parliament every every four years, we had uh, have it last year, and we each 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 time we have it, we have a, a Rasa day. So I go over there and do my little tourist tourist venture campaign and try to actually you know, folks in space on the island for the day, which is terrific. I mean, it's, it's usually a good day. I don't think it's only been raining out once, or John. I mean, it's, well, rained out. We, we just sat inside and ate. I mean, you know, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to rain out here. So we, in Scotland, it's probably not. <laughs> just go back a bit. When Dame Flora McLeod McLeod, she was the 29th chief of the, of the McLeods of McLeod. That stage of really only one recognised chief. My father went to a lot of trouble in uh, 1988 to prove that he was head of the branch, but by then, you know, Dave Flora was up here, and I'm, you know, I'm not trying to make mischief, but I think, you know, well, I am. <laughs> 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 I 
going to take me outside. Um, I, I think what, what you often find is that uh, a lot of things are written and uh, whoever writes it first gets it, gets, it, gets first say. <laughs> so a lot of the books that you see, it, it only seems to mention yeah, McLeod, McLeod, McLeod of Harris. You look at you know, McLeod Tartan and all you see is that one. And this is McLeod of McLeod Tartan. This one's McLeod of Rasso Tartan and the one the seashore's wearing is McLeod Blue. So there are, there are three main, well, pretty rather lady, lovely ladies wearing the big yellow as well. They're over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're coming, they're they're coming threes. Actually. <laughs> they're scattered about. So, so the, the three main titans, but in actual fact, there's probably what, 20 or something, really. I mean, there's, there's lots to choose from. So, whatever suits you with wardrobe. In theory, you're meant to have actually asked the, the chief if you could wear a title. But I'm a <laughs> So, what's your brother's email address? <laughs> 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 so to go back to, to 1500, as I mentioned, Rory gave this land to, to uh, his second son, Malcolm, and he lived in Brockle Castle, which is like, has anybody been to Rasay, apart from the obvious? I mean, it's a spectacular ride, I mean, it's just full of everything that you'd ever want from an eco-tourism point of view, just, and it's easy to get to, relatively easy, easy to get around, and just, just a very nice place, but on the on the east coast there's an old castle called Brockle Castle, which is slowly going back to the sea. Really? And you know, some things you should just leave, if it's one of them. Uh, restoration campaign I think is completely off the, off the, uh, off the line. So in 1700 they still think it's been enclosed. They moved to their new house, they built that in 1700. It's the new house. Sorry, it's <laughs> brand new house. <laughs> and unfortunately it was up until 19, 1746, because 1745, John McLeod of Rasa, Malcolm McLeod of Rasa, was, was asked to join Body Prince Charlie at Colot, and that's an ill fated exercise that I want to dwell on. But the McLeods of Rasa were the only ones that actually decided to go. So it was McLeod and McLeod, Dunvega and Harris, they chose not to. And so they, they were with the government, and we were with Body Prince Charlie. And if you look at it two ways, you say, well, the McLeods probably got together to do a bit of collusion, which I know is illegal. <laughs> and said, look, I tell you, you go that way, we'll go this way, and one of us is going to win. <laughs> so it's going to be a survival of the fact, perhaps, I don't know. But uh, anyway, it's worked out. Um, but then we, uh, we don't live in that way. The problem is, when you... So, let's start again. So it was pretty... We killed the animals, built all the, all the potting houses down, and got, it didn't actually totally destroy the house, but it did a fair bit of damage. So... And of course, added on top of that, we had the act of prescription where they actually stopped everybody in the Highlands where it was tartan. Hence, we had the Kirk and the Tartan to make a remember that that situation. Which is, and between those things, Culloden and the Retribution and the uh, prescription, there's no doubt that they actually probably destroyed the clan system and we had the family life that we talked about and remember all that in the Highlands, the history of the Highlands. And of course the hiring clearances were just literally a subset of all that of course. And a combination of, of trying to do the house up and um, somehow cope with the, with the changing economics of running a farm, running factories, because I think at the end of the day, I think Scotland became the, the wool supplier for the, 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 the big builds that it's out. <coughs> so the clansmen or the profits were replaced by what they call the four foot of clansmen. The ship and the ship. And I mean, I guess I'm not trying to trying to um, stick up for my, my forebears, but I guess at the end of the day, if you're trying to make money and, and you have to make it make it go up, but then you've got to do what you do. But having said that, if you've ever seen some of these these places where people lived all those years ago in the island, you'd say, well, I'd probably leave as well, because it was interesting. You hear some people say, oh, I'm going back to see my family, where they came from. I just don't understand. I don't know why they would have left this gorgeous country as they're leaving Emperor. <laughs> and as they get further up, they find out this little, little nothing like that, just a pile of rocks. <laughs> and they said, they live there? God, no wonder they live. <laughs> so my grand, my, uh, my family sold the island in 1845. <coughs> and my great great grandfather, Francis, Frank as he was known, his siblings and his mother left Scotland and went to South Australia. And they set up a had a um, sheep station there. It's all leased country. They they organised most of this before they left England because they, Australia actually tried to build up um, 
country, so they were quite happy to have people that had some experience in farming as they did in those days. And uh, so they all went there to live. And they stayed in this lease place for between 1845 and 46. They actually started it off until about 1874. And at the end of the 1874, they had to redraft the leases and they went up 22 times. So they, they were driven off the land again. So it was not a happy scene for them. But in the meantime, my great great grandfather Frank married a Tasmanian girl, Alice Fenton, and she went to live with him. And they had three children, but they both died. She died when she was 30. The average age of all those families that came out at the time, the average age of the well, average life was 53 years. So wow. whether the Australian climate is pretty tough, I'm not sure, but you know, didn't survive. So hence my great great grandfather was born in Tasmania, and we've been there ever since. It was a torturous trip, and uh, I've said it before, I whinge and moan about the fact that it took 34 hours to get here at home. I guess they had a much tougher trip than that. <laughs> but they didn't go back. <laughs> and just, if I got a few minutes, I don't know, how much time have got? Yeah, I want to talk about Rasa, Rasa House, because I think it's a, you know, an interesting story to consider what to do here, because Rasa House, after it was burnt, it was, it was uh, well, not when it was burnt, really, but uh, 1746 was burnt, it was done up, so they lived in it again. Several owners after the family sold it built onto it. So if you ever go there and look at Rasa House now, it looks just like, you know, it's a sandstone mansion. I mean, it's, in those days, everybody wanted to get this Highland stuff out of their head and wanted to be Victorian. So it looks quite Victorian. But when my family had it, it was like, you know, every mansion, very inexpensive. You, know, you expect it to be fairly economical. <laughs> so step forward to um, early 1900s, and suddenly the house was being was owned by the government. Then, you know, a chap bought it and it became a house, a hotel, and it had various lives for a while. And then about uh, 25 years ago, the outdoor centre, the, the Rasa House, the outdoor centre were looking for a home, so they set up camp there. Pretty much a dilapidated building, but you know, it's a, a huge house, big rooms, and so you have more than a percent of the front of plumbing, the rest of the electric, the rest of the rest. They stay there for 20 odd years. And about 2005, the, around at that time, it's pretty, uh, Highland and Island Council, what they want to do is to stop with all these islands around. They, they want the community to buy up the islands, the parts of the island, just take the cost out of the money and put the owners back with the community. And what happened at that time was the community bought out the, bought the house and the lands around it, the water supply, the forest, and we have, uh, you know, it's probably about uh, 20, 30 acres with, with the land, and all the mining rights. So basically, um, so in 2007, so we've got some quotations to get it done up. They got a, 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 a donation or a, a, some funding from the big lottery fund in the, in the, in the, in the EU, the EU, four million pounds, plus the money from Highland Island Development Council, plus some of the Guritaro stock. So they're reasonable people to build it. So in 2008, they were, 2007, they were rebuilding and doing it up, but it was only just a bit of a system, plumbing, wiring, all sorts of stuff. But they ultimately uh, got, the, got the, the, the job done. The day it was to be handed over in 2009, caught fire again. It was almost like you know, the action to the it was a bit of soul destroying. Anyway, of course, the company galloping along comes the insurance company, and so it's been done again. This time it's been done into a hotel. Well, the first time was we just to sort of do it up in a place, we fix it up like an elephant, an elephant. So it's a part of the <laughs> And now it's, uh, it's just a very, very smart place. You, know, you picture a house that's built at 7 and 30 and all the rooms were on sweat. It's great. <laughs> uh, normally you see ads for houses with like 10, 10 bedrooms and one bathroom. So, so, so the house now is, uh, is standing on its own right, it's being used commercially. Uh, it's a wonderful island, I'm very proud to be the, the patron of the community the company that owns it. It gives me a good link, which I'm excuse to go back almost on an annual basis to remind them. Um, and, and so my, my interest is very, very strong to be in the Rase. South Australia, where I found the town in Nali and also Tasmania. What I'd like to do is, is probably stop it there because, like I said, we're like me with the lady and what happened with the house. But if there's any questions I'd like to ask, because I've got, once I've got dreams, I wasn't going to go through all about Tasmania, but if you want to ask me where Tasmania is, that's probably right. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's, if there's any questions or we want to discuss with the house, and. Okay. So. Go ahead. Yeah. No. You said that uh, I could ask him posthumously. 
So now, where does the Lewis Tartan go to? Does it go back to you? Oh, no, no. I was being facetious. Okay. you. Oh, no. Oh, is it that nice? Okay. Oh, we take things seriously, you know. No, my brother, my brother's only two years older than me. Okay. He's headed to Lewis Tartan. Okay. I'll write him a uh, forgive me note. <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't do that. I'll pass it on. <laughs> well, the chief's still here for a while, so we yeah. can still ask questions as we're as we're moving along too. But let's go ahead and walk towards the house. There you go. Chief John, Tom Delaney grew up as one of the... Uh, uh, yeah, we, we talked about you did talk? Yeah. And yeah, he, yeah, he would be the one to show you uh, some of the things that he knows about the house as a, as a child. And, uh, uh, Please, sure. 